A small plane is now up right after flipping over on takeoff at Burlington International Airport. Good evening, I'm Alex Rose. That story is first on Local 44. South Burlington Police, Fire and Vermont's National Guard responded to the incident at Burlington International shortly before 4 p.m. The director of aviation says a pilot and one passenger were taken to UVM Medical Center. He said the two were the only people on board. Director of Aviation Gene Richards says a crosswind may have been a factor, but the cause is still unknown. The Federal Aviation Administration is currently investigating. FAA investigates all crashes as well as the state of Vermont. Um, so uh, everybody will look at the details and figure out what happened. We're waiting to hear back about the pilot and passenger's medical conditions from UVM Medical Center. Richards says the incident did not disrupt other air traffic at the airport. Now to consumer matters. It's been a year and a half since downtown Burlington got new smart parking meters. But a recent tweet complaining about the technology made us wonder how people really feel. Local 44's Megan Carpenter has the story. When a Burlington resident sent this tweet a couple days ago, we checked in with consumers and the city on Sunday to find out how the Queen City's 300 smart parking meters are functioning. It's been a year and a half since their installation. I often use these meters specifically because I don't normally have cash or change on me. So having the credit card function makes it incredibly easy. Going from a mechanical meter to uh, something that is cellularly enabled and has a lot of functionality uh, is more complex. By and large, the public is really enjoying the multiple ways of paying. Burlington's Public Works Director Chapin Spencer says these smart meters didn't come without a few kinks. Some were too high. There had been a few issues with credit cards uh, not coming out easily or the backlights not working. Those issues have largely been resolved. I am a very big fan of these meters. They are fantastic. I wish all of them took credit cards, especially down by Skinny Pancake. Another perk? A cell phone app that lets you add more money without going back to your meter. Our hopes were that people that are coming to visit our city and our university um, use the very same app in their hometowns. UVM's Director of Transportation, Jim Barr, partnered with Spencer to roll out the app just four months ago. You know, you've got 15 minutes until your uh, parking uh, uh, expires. Do you want to extend it? And so it, it really is such a convenient option for us. What Courtney Keller says makes Burlington's downtown experience even more enjoyable. It would be just wonderful if these existed everywhere. Megan Carpenter, Local 44 News. The director of Public Works says Sunday pay is a possibility in the future, meaning weekday pay would be less expensive. The pay by cell phone app is free, but you're charged 35 cents every time you use it. The Queen City continues to upgrade downtown parking. This summer, improvements coming to public parking garages. The director of Public Works says the money people have been putting into downtown Burlington parking is now being used to invest more than a million dollars into the city's three parking garages this summer. All of them in need of an upgrade being decades old. We're doing some structural work, uh, but we're rehabbing the marketplace elevators. We're doing new paint schemes. Uh, we are completely relighting the College Street garage to give it a much more welcoming look. Uh, it's going to be a much better experience for the public this year. A couple of these garages were built in the 70s and 80s. The College Street garage already had drainage improvements done last year. Spencer says this round of construction should begin in just a couple of weeks. In environmental matters, after recent testing, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the chemical PFOA is no longer found in the water at Hoosick Falls. A water filtration system was recently installed in the town to remove the chemical from drinking water. The state has also reached an agreement with the company that caused the contamination leak to bring bottled water to the residents. Governor Cuomo says this is a situation people are dealing with across the country. This situation with uh, chemicals in the water, I would love to say, is unique. And we don't think this is ever going to happen again. We were chatting inside. Unfortunately, I believe uh, we're going to continue to find situations like this all throughout the state, all throughout the country. You'll remember similar contamination concerns have been brought up in North Bennington, Vermont, earlier this month, where the former Chem Lab factory was located.
Now we are your local election headquarters. Vermont's Progressive Party met in Barrie today to discuss major issues facing the state. Committee leaders working on the state budget, seeing how budget cuts could affect state workers. These employees are in contract negotiations as of now, and party leaders say they want to help change the conversation, advocating for these workers. We hope in our small way we can impact the conversation, um, uh, push for amendments to happen as necessary, and support state employees in their bargaining so they get a fair contract that actually um, has a real cost of living increase for these hardworking uh, Vermonters. At the meeting, people heard from state employees about what they thought was needed and provided ideas for support. New polling numbers are coming in two days before a key primary. According to the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal Marist poll, Donald Trump is leading Marco Rubio in the senator's home state by more than 20 percent. Ohio Governor John Kasich is ahead in his home state with 39 percent of the vote, but only has a six-point lead over Donald Trump. Tuesday's primaries also include Illinois, North Carolina, and Missouri. The Democratic presidential candidates are telling Ohio voters why they deserve to be in the White House. CNN's Democratic Town Hall is in Ohio underway right now. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders addressed the outbursts at Donald Trump's rally this weekend. He says Trump isn't doing enough to stop the violence. Trump has got to get on the TV and tell his supporters that violence in the political process in America is not acceptable end of discussion. Sanders will be traveling throughout the day tomorrow visiting Ohio, North Carolina and Missouri. And on the campaign trail, Governor John Kasich is trying to get support from voters in his home state of Ohio. While meeting with people in Heath today, Governor Kasich spoke about the anxiety some Americans are feeling about the current job market and how young people are struggling to get employed. People work hard, they play by the rules, and oftentimes you don't get the fair shake. You know, the wind blows, blows the wrong way and we find ourselves out of work. And that's a lot of the anxiety today. Uh, you know, am I going to keep my job? Will I ever get a pay raise? Florida Senator Marco Rubio has also encouraged Ohio voters to support Kasich on Tuesday. Now coming up, Vermonters' favorite treat may be affected by the warm winter. What to know about the upcoming maple sugar season? Plus, St. Patty's Day comes early. Irish Heritage celebrations kick off in the Green Mountain State. You're watching Local 44 News at 10. Local news that matters to Northern New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire.